not, I'm also trying to pay attention to your names here in case one day I see you in one of my classes. So I teach two levels of calculus. You don't really need to know what that is right now, except that it's the math that's after algebra, after geometry, after algebra two, and after uh, trigonometry and pre-calculus. Okay, so you guys probably have a few years to go before you get there. Sharis is in one of my classes in AP Calculus BC, and Cheryl's in my other class in multivariable calculus. This is me as a kid. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys guess which one of those, which one of those, okay, faces is me. Okay, I was born in Taiwan, and I'll give you a clue. Okay, I'm the one with the ugliest haircut. I'm the girl with the ugliest haircut. Anybody want to guess which one of those in this? So there's my oh, parents. Oh, and I hear it. The one right. Uh, the one. Right. The one. Um, one right. The right one. Are next you to your dad. Right here. Uh, okay. Oh, the person that circled, whoever circled me in purple. Me. Linka, did you do that? Yes. That's right on. Does that really look like me? Yeah, that is me. Okay. I don't know what my parents were thinking. Isn't that like the ugliest haircut you've ever seen on a girl? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. So I was born in Taiwan. Okay. The reason I'm bringing up this picture also to show you, uh, well, me as a kid, but uh, how many of you love school? Like when it gets to Sunday, you're like, oh, I can't wait to go to school tomorrow. I, oh, good. I see a couple. I like it, but I like to relax. <laughs> no, sorry. What was that, Ellie? Um, I like school, but I also like to like go to weekend and like relax a little. I like this school, yeah. but going to my school, which is five days a week, is kind of tiring. Yeah, I think I'm with you. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh man, I got to go to school tomorrow. I love my students. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But sometimes on a Sunday, I'm like, oh man, I got to go to school tomorrow. So the reason I want to share about my mom. Okay. My mom that's right here. Uh, she was, she almost couldn't finish junior high in high school because when she was in Taiwan, she would help run her father or my grandfather's shop. And my grandfather told her, you're a girl. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to finish junior high. You don't need to finish high school. So when she was in junior high, she was helping to run the family store and she had to fight and argue and argue with her dad just about every day, just so that she could go to school. And so sometimes, you know, when it gets to a Sunday, I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to school. And I was thinking that as a student, I had thoughts like that. Oh, I don't want to go to school tomorrow man, there's a test tomorrow. Cheryl's probably thinking that I'm giving her a test tomorrow. Okay. So she's like, oh man, why do I need to go to school tomorrow? I have a test, you know? And then I think about my mom and my mom, really, she almost couldn't finish school. So for one year, in fact, when she was in junior high, maybe your age, when she was in junior high, her, her dad told her, you're a girl. You don't, you know, you're just going to get married sometime and your husband's going to support you. You're, you know, you don't need to finish school. So he actually had her stay home for one whole year and helped her with the, stu with the store. And she was so sad every day when she would look out and she would see her friends walking down the sidewalk in front of the store. And she was thinking, I want to be in school. I want to be in school. And so then finally she did that for one. She kept fighting, kept arguing with her parents. So if your parents ever tell you, you can't go to school, I need you to stay home. You know, you can argue with them a little bit, okay? Cause we want you in school, okay? And then she did, okay? She argued with her parents. She did get to finish junior high. She did get to finish high school. In fact, many years she was like the president of her class cause she's really smart. Um, and she really liked math, okay? So that's something I think my mom um, taught all of us, even though she couldn't go to, wasn't able to go to college, but she's really smart with math. She used to do math on the abacus. Anybody know what an abacus is? Those Chinese calculators? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No batteries. Okay. Uh, she used that to do her math, to help her parents with the, with the store. Uh, my dad was also a really good educator. He was a principal at a school for troubled teenagers. Uh, it was actually a school for troubled boys. You know, like imagine like your brothers or something getting into trouble and they would go to that school. Okay. So that's the school that my dad was principal for. Um, they um, didn't really like the, some of the ways of the Taiwan education system, how a lot of things were just like memorize this, memorize that. And so they wanted to bring us to America to, to give us a uh, American education system. So I kind of contrasted this in color just to show you, we moved to America 
Uh, I went to the public schools in Richmond. This is me graduating high school. Okay. Um, the high school I went to was okay. Um, you know, I thought it was fine, but I think one day I read Times Magazine and Times Magazine put my high school as one of the 10 worst schools in the nation. You know, why would they do things like that, right? <laughs> okay, so that kind of surprised me. But, you know, I thought it was fine because my parents always taught us, no matter what school you go to, you do the best with what you have. You try your hardest. If school's not teaching you enough, you do other things, okay? Like what you girls are doing right now, okay? Maybe not because school's not enough, but maybe because you like coming here. You have great teachers here, Cheryl and Sherris, right? You know, my parents told us if you do what it takes so that you can learn more. And so that's, um, here's my, you know, uh, me and my five brothers and sisters kind of grown up here. Um, this is kind of, you know, so I, I went to a school that I guess they told me wasn't the best school, but you know, I didn't know that, um, because to me, I just used the best of what, you know, basically the best of whatever I was given. And so I liked school. Um, I think the reason it was listed as one of the 10 worst schools is because we had a lot of racial riots. Uh, we, there were a lot of fights. And so what I would do is if I see a fight going on, I just kind of walk the other way. You know, I would just go another route, um, stay out of trouble basically, right? So when you're, you know, you get to choose your friends, right? You choose if there's people that's doing drugs or doing stuff that, you know, they shouldn't be doing, those were not my friends. Those were the ones I would not hang out with. So I had a great experience. Um, I was totally fine in my high school. Um, I think I was pro I was the first person in my high school and my high school had been around for 26 years. I was the first person from my high school to go to Stanford. Um, any of you heard of Stanford? Have you, have you been, any of you visited Stanford, the college? No? Oh, if you get a chance, go visit. It's a beautiful campus, bring your bikes. It's a great campus to bike around because it's huge. Um, let's see. And, oh, somebody, I just finally looked at my chat. Um, Ellie, you're asking, what grade do I teach and do I know your brother? Um, I teach calculus. So I have some students that are freshmen, some sophomores, some juniors, and some seniors in calculus. Linka, you have a question? Have people, what, the, what was the most challenging thing in college? an obstacle in like doing school and yeah in doing are you talking high school or college or like teaching yeah. teaching oh in class. teaching um you know the obstacle yeah no that's a great question in teaching I think it's getting to get kids to want to learn because I feel like everybody's smart yeah everybody's really smart but sometimes I have a hard time getting kids to want to learn you know and right now, especially on, on this camera thing, right? With Zoom, when we were in person, I could just walk around and say, Linka, wake up. I, I, I'm just picking on you because I know you're always awake in class, okay? But you know, if you're in the class, right? I know when somebody's sleeping. If in the Zoom classroom, I think that's the biggest challenge. I'm looking out going, oh, I don't know if Yashvi's asleep right now or if just the, the, her camera's turned off. Sorry, I'm just picking on you, Yashvi, okay? Just because your camera's off right now, but you can turn it back on so I remember what you look like, huh? So, you know, stuff like that, right? In, in the virtual classroom, that, I think that's hard. Yeah, it's hard to know. Are kids paying attention or, or not? Hi, Yashvi. <laughs> okay. um, thank you. Any other questions? Oh, and Ellie, you asked if I know your brother. Who's your brother? I, don't, I actually don't think um, you know him. I asked him if like, he recognizes your name. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, tell him he should take calculus because I think that's the okay. best way to map. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I see some of your last names sound familiar to me, like Biswas, for example. Is that Anisha? Is that your? Because I know I've taught a few, a couple of Biswas. No, Anisha, do you have brothers or sister at Valley Christian? I have a sister. Oh, what's your sister's name? Arushi. 
Okay, no, sorry, wrong business. Okay, <laughs> but maybe I'll get to teach her sometime. Okay, so here's my family life in. Let me see, where am I? Um, okay, so I've always liked math. Feel free, by the way, anytime, okay, to ask questions. Also, you know, you'll stay more awake that way, right? Um, and I'll just kind of pay attention to the uh, pay attention to the chat here if you guys have questions. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, I just went backward. Okay. Uh, okay, so this was life in America. So we graduated from we went to Danza High School, went to Juan Crispy Junior High, went to Danza High School, and then um, I just decided to apply to Stanford. Um, it was not a school that a college that kids from my school went to. Um, really, one day I saw a poster and it says something like, Stanford Music Department wants you. And I was really into playing the piano at the time. I used to do a lot of math competition, uh, not math, um, piano competitions. So when I saw that poster, I just went, whoa, it kind of got my attention. I never thought to apply to Stanford because nobody from my high school had gone to Stanford. Um, but I looked at that poster and I said, oh, uh, it says something like, you know, the Stanford music department wants you or something like that. I wasn't planning to major in music, but I thought, oh, why not? Let's go try. And so they had auditions. So I came and auditioned and then I did the whole application thing as well. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to pray about it and decide if God thinks that's the place where I'm supposed to be, then things will work out. And so I was absolutely shocked, quite honestly, I was absolutely shocked when I got a letter. Uh, nowadays, when you're like, maybe your older brother or sister, when they apply to college, they'll get an email, okay? Back in our days, we would get a letter. And so when you get this letter, if your letter is really, really thin, it looks like only one sheet of paper in there, then you kind of know it's probably like a thank you for applying, but no thank you. When my letter was pretty thick, my heart started racing, okay? Because I thought, really? Am I really getting into Stanford? Nobody in my high school, my high school had been around for 26 years. Nobody in my high school had ever gotten into Stanford, but I think it's because most people didn't apply. And so uh, when I saw the letter and the letter was thick, my heart was racing because I went, oh my goodness, am I really getting into the school? And sure enough, I said, congratulations. Um, so the next thing when I, then when I went to my parents and I said, can I go? Because my parents are raising six kids and not making that much money. And so, you know, um, if God wants you to do something, there's a way to make it happen. And so with scholarships, with jobs, with all sorts of stuff, it did happen. Um, so sorry, I just totally went off tangent here, but that was, um, oh, here's some pictures with, um, this is graduating from Stanford. Here's some of my friends, that's from my undergrad. I don't know why I just had a picture here of my husband that I married. Okay. <laughs> I met him when I was in uh, in college. Uh, Myron, um, do you like how he proposed to me here? Can you see the cake? So when I was um, so I, I ended up getting my my bachelor's that's after four years and then I stayed another I stayed another year and a half and got my master's. Um, and during the time that I was getting towards like the last year of my graduate degree, he asked me to go to dinner and he had this, and after dinner, he gave me like this cake and I started cutting the cake and it was so solid. It was rock hard, okay? And you know, he's, he's such a joker. He said, he said, well, I think maybe a solid chocolate, okay? So I think you need to take the knife and you need to like slice it across. You need to slice it through the middle instead. Okay, so I'm, I was so gullible, I just believed him. I said, oh, okay. So I start slicing it across through the middle. And when I open it up, there was a ring box inside. That's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so um, let's see. Did I, oh, somebody's asking, did I get, uh, get into Stanford through a music audition? So Stanford doesn't do interviews. They do something, they do do music auditions. Um, it doesn't guarantee you a way to get into the college, but it's like a way of if you do well in the music audition, they'll write that in your application, you know, like that's a little extra brownie point you got. Okay, so that's what I did. I did a music audition. I wasn't planning to major in music and I didn't major in music, 
but it was something that I did just to kind of, you know, put a little star on my application um, because that was a school that I was interested in. What time did you start um, um, wanting, loving math more than you started, more than you loved um, uh, music? Yeah, no, good question. Um, so math, you know, I've always liked actually starting um, before your age. Uh, I remember, so in, I left Taiwan when I was in second grade. And then I, when I came to the States and even then, even in Taiwan, I remember liking math. And then when I came here to America, um, math was just one of the classes that was probably the easiest for me. And I also enjoyed kind of helping other students. So because it was a class that was easy for me, um, I remember just kind of tutoring other kids. So I would go to my girlfriend's house, who's, you know, who's blonde hair and, you know, blue eyes, right? Um, when I was in fourth grade, I would go to her house and her old, and she had trouble with math. So I would help her, her name's Jill. And she had an older sister, Julie, who was in junior high. So I'm in fourth grade, Julie is in sixth grade. And Julie came to me and said, you know, you're, my sister says, you're really good at math. Can you help me? And she's two years older than me but I would help her, you know? So I'm in fourth grade and I felt pretty proud of myself that I could tutor somebody in sixth grade. And so that kind of just continued. So I'm in, you know, I'd be in fourth, I'd be tutored in sixth grader. And her mom was so sweet. She said, thank you for helping her. She did better on her desk. And she started paying me, you know, I'm in fourth grade and I get a couple bucks. I thought I was just, man, this is great. I'm going to keep this up. I get to fifth grade, she's in seventh grade, I keep tutoring her, you know? So it was great. It was kind of a good way to make some easy money and doing something that I really liked. And I tutored some other kids also, you know, like my mom had other kids, so I'd go and tutor them and stuff like that. You know, you don't have to be that much older, right? You look at Sharis, uh, Sharis is probably not that much older than some of you, right? Um, but if you're passionate about something, you like something, sure. Uh, um, Ellie, you're asking what grade do I teach? Um, I teach um, AP Calculus, BC and multivariable. So what grade, it depends on, most of them are juniors and seniors. Most of my students are the oldest ones. Okay, um, Cheryl and Sharis are kind of, you know, those, uh, you know, the strange creatures, right? They're, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> they were, they were kind of like me, they like math. Okay, kind of like you guys, uh, they, they like math, right? And so they're really great students, even though they're some of my younger students. Sharis is only, are you a freshman? Is that right? Sophomore. Yeah, freshman. You're a freshman, you are, okay. Um, and Cheryl is a junior, right? Okay. So they're sophomores and juniors and they're in my class, but I have some kids that are, um, you know, all the way from freshmen to seniors. Yeah. So, um, and Ellie, your last name is Lee. So I've taught a lot of Lees. Who's your brother? I'm pretty sure he doesn't know you, but his name is Jaden. Jaden. Okay. I've taught Jaden's, but not Jaden Lee. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> so maybe not, huh? I would love to teach some of you when you get to. Um, calculus is probably the hot, the last level. So after you take algebra, you know, um, algebra one, geometry, then algebra two, and trigonometry, and then you get to calculus. Okay. So yeah. Um, Jai, Jai, is that how you pronounce your name? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you have a question? get into calculus. How do you get into calculus? Is that what you said? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you do need to take your, you know, you have to take algebra one. Algebra one is probably the most important. And then usually schools have geometry after that and then algebra two. And then usually it's like trigonometry or pre-calculus. And then after that, then calculus. Yeah. So there's quite a few years of math before. Um, and we use all that other stuff. We use, like if you're in algebra right now or you're in pre-algebra, pre we use all of that. We use pre-algebra, we use algebra, we use math, we use fourth and fifth grade math. I mean, we use really all the math that you guys are doing, whatever level that is, uh, we're using all of that in calculus. Yeah, so it's, it's usually one of the last years or maybe the very last year of math in high school. And somebody asked, what school do I teach at? I teach at Valley Christian, Valley Christian 
uh, Valley Christian High School, the same school that Cheryl and Sharas go to. Um, so Nishka, you asked, did I get into Stanford through the music audition? Um, so Stanford has music auditions and they said what that does, it doesn't guarantee you admission. What it does is puts a little like check mark on your application, okay? So when you're applying, if you do a music audition like what I did, then and you do well, then the person that auditions you, they're gonna write something into your application. So it makes your application look a little bit stronger. It doesn't automatically get you in, but it makes your application look a little stronger. So, um, and you also asked if I got a scholarship. I didn't get a scholarship from the music group, but I did get scholarship from Stanford. And that's because, you know, if, and that's based on financial need. They look at how much money you're, and this is true for any school, not just any college. So if you're thinking, oh, my parents don't make that much money. We can't afford to go to the expensive colleges. Um, if you can't, if your parents can't afford to send you to the college, then those are really the kids that get the most scholarship because colleges look at that. So colleges looked at my school, uh, my family and said, oh, there's six kids. Um, you know, uh, my parents can't support six kids through college. Four of us were going to college at the same time. So I got a lot of scholarship from Stanford and other schools also were willing to give me scholarships. Berkeley was willing to give me a scholarship because, um, you know, not because I'm smarter than everybody else, just because my family, we needed the help because there's six kids. Yeah. So know that you guys, if you're thinking, oh, well, my parents can't afford for me to go to college, that's totally okay. Yeah, colleges have a lot of money to give. So um, Ellie, um, do I know your brother? Who's your brother, Ellie? Um, you, I already, you already answered my question. Oh, know. I did. Oh, okay. A few times. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see. I'm... So, oh, this is where I worked before I became a teacher. I was not always a teacher. I worked at Hewlett Packard first and I worked at Tandem Computers. I just didn't have a picture of me in front of Tandem Computers. I was actually only at Hewlett Packard for like 10 months. I didn't like it very much. It's a good company, but I just, it was kind of boring. What I did was boring. So I moved to Tandem Computers and I was there for 10 years. And I did what's called database. Um, database systems or query optimization, it's pretty mathy actually. So we write, uh, I wrote computer software. You guys ever, you go to the bank, do you guys go to the ATM or do your parents go to the ATM? Maybe you, you're with them. When you go to the a ATM and you put in your card and you say you want money, you know, uh, you wanna get money out of your bank, it's using database software to take money out of, the, out of your bank. And so I helped to write that software that's back there um, that gets money out of your bank. And the part that I was doing was the most, probably the most mathy part. It's called query optimization. You know, imagine you or your mom going up to the ATM and wanting to take out $100, okay? Now, if the query optimizer, that's the part I work on, if the query optimizer does a bad job, your mom would have to stand there and wait for five minutes before she can get her money. What do you think? Would your mom be pretty impatient? Yeah, of course not. They're gonna like probably go to another bank, okay? So the software, I wrote computer software. The software I wrote for the query optimization is the stuff that would take, you know, your mom comes in and says, I need $100 for my bank account. And the software that I wrote, the computer program that I wrote was responsible for getting, for answering that question as fast as you can, okay? So that, right, you're, you know, when your parents go to the bank and go to the ATM, usually it's like, man, it's fast, right? You get the money out pretty quickly, okay? And that's because of the soft, software like that, okay? So I worked at Tandem Computers that does that, um, wrote, made, the, made that database stuff really, really quick. Okay, so we can get data very, very quick. Um, Yashvi asked, what made you wanna to switch to being a teacher? And Nishka asked, did I do coding? Yeah, I did a lot of coding. So to implement query optimization, I, I wrote a lot of computer software and that uses a lot of math actually. When you're writing, so especially in the component that I'm using, it was just all about math, okay? So we can get data from the, from the database. Either we can do it really, really slow or we can do it fast, right? So we implemented a lot of math algorithms so that we can get that data. Because um, there's so many, right? You go to Bank of America, there's so many customers. 
you don't want the software to just search through each person one by one, right? Okay, we've got algorithms that will search that data super fast to get it back to you. Um, so I did learn coding. Um, when I was at Stanford, oh, I didn't even mention, when I was at Stanford, I got a bachelor's in applied math because uh, I liked math. Math was easy for me ever since like elementary school, you know, um, and I liked it. And, and then I stayed and did a master's in computer science because I love that in computer science, you use math also, but you get to do something very, very practical with it. Actually write a program, you know, that does something, right? So I love that. I went to, um, so Nishka was asking, did you code? Where did you learn to code? Uh, maybe at your schools, you guys are can probably start coding in your high school or maybe even in junior high. I don't know, depending on your school. Yeah, is that true? You guys can learn coding, yeah. I did not get to learn any coding when I was in high school because my high school didn't have any programming classes. So I learned when I went to college. And it was actually okay if you have a good math background. I think if you have a good math background, computer programming is a lot of logic. So if you have a good math background, it's kind of it just like the basis for so many different majors, computer science and science and you know medical doctors and all sorts of, yeah, they all need math as a background. Yeah, so I did not take my first computer science class until I think the end of my freshman year in college. And then I ended up getting a master's degree in computer science after, after my bachelor's. So I did that at Stanford also. Um, you guys are asking really good questions, by the way. Oh, somebody asked, uh, which part of math is the most useful in your future as an adult? That's a really good question. Um, so I mentioned that to get to calculus, you have to, oh, that's Callie, you asked that question. Um, to get to calculus, you need algebra, you need geometry, you need algebra two, you need trigonometry, you need calculus, okay? Um, of course, right now, I think calculus is the most important because that's what I teach, but no. Um, but I have to say algebra, I think. Algebra is like, you can't do calculus unless you know algebra, okay? You can't do even financing and economics unless you know algebra. You can't do statistics unless you know algebra. So I feel like um, to me out of all those years of math I've taken, probably algebra is like the basis for all of those higher level math. So maybe I would say that's uh, the most important. Which one's the most interesting? I think calculus is the most interesting. <laughs> so I would love for all of you to did you just hear all of those levels of math I mentioned you have to do before you get to calculus. So you have to do all of that, okay, before you get to calculus. I think calculus is the most fun because finally you get to talk about real life, use math in real life, you know. Um, so so I think that's the most fun, but I think algebra is probably um, the most important. Um, so yeah, so keep up with all the whatever math level you're in now, because I would love to see some, um, you know, all of you get to calculus. Um, what made you switch to being a teacher? Yashvi, that's a great question. Um, I, I was an engineer for 10 years, and I loved it, actually. Um, I really liked it. Um, but at some point, when I was an engineer, I realized that some of the part that I really enjoyed was teaching other people. So I like the programming, I like the developing, I like working as a team to solve problems. But then towards the end, I realized, you know, I really like teaching other engineers how to program. And then when I became a mom, I had one kid, then I had two kids, then I had three kids, okay? And it was kind of hard to be a full-time programmer while, and also trying to be a really good mom. And so then I became part-time and it was kind of hard to be a full-time engineer while um, also being a full-time mom, right? And so that's when I decided. Um, so I went to halftime at Tandem Computers. They were very flexible with me. They said, oh, just work 20 hours a week instead of 40. And they were very flexible with me. And then when I switched to halftime, I started spending more time teaching, teaching other engineers and realized, hey, I like teaching. And so then I stayed home for five years and I decided to go, um, teach at my kids' schools. So that's what happened. Yeah, and I realized I love teaching. Well, 
Um, these are, this is a picture back from, oh, this is a long time ago, okay, 2001, okay? These three little munchkins in the front here are my kids that are now in their 20s, okay? Uh, Nathaniel is now 26, Naomi is 22, and Nicole is 21, okay? But if you look at my, so these are, I think I showed you when the picture in Taiwan, it was my mom and six kids, or actually um, my baby brother, he's the tallest one, Johnny, he's my baby brother. Um, he wasn't in that picture because he wasn't born yet. Okay, but in this picture, now it's six kids plus the husbands and wives plus their kids, right? Back in 2001. So if I look at this group, this is a pretty big group. You know, I would say everybody's using math. Okay, Angela, my niece here is now a medical doctor in Hong Kong. She uses math, right? Your doctors use math when they're, okay, when they're performing surgeries and giving you prescriptions. My sister here was an engineer and now she's a professor in Hong Kong and she's teaching business and she's using math, teaching her kids, uh, her students. My sister-in-law is an optometrist for, you know, an eye doctor. You think eye doctors use math? Sure. Yeah. When they're coming up with your, yeah, they use math. My brother here, Johnny is the, he's my baby brother, but he's the tallest one. He's CEO of a company called Title Nine. Anybody heard of Title Nine or Lululemon? How's that? Have you heard of Lululemon? Okay. So they don't, Title Nine does not like Lululemon. Okay. <laughs> But I think Lululemon is more popular. Okay, so Title IX is the competition for Lululemon. So he, uh, even though he's a guy, okay, he's CEO of Title IX, the company that uh, sells sells athletic clothing for women. Okay, does he use math? Yeah, he has to do the budget and all that. He has to look at numbers. He is not an expert at all on women's clothing. I mean, you think my my good looking brother here knows anything about sports bras for women? No, he doesn't, but he under, sorry, I didn't mean to use that word here. Okay, um, but, um, but he sure knows finances. He knows math, okay? Cause he's the one that's looking at the numbers to see if they're making money. So he uses math. These three people here are in real estate. Do you think real estate agents when they're selling houses, do you think they use math? Yeah? When your parents bought a house, do they use math? Sure, yeah, if they're, you know, they, they're trying to negotiate how much the house costs, sure. Uh, this guy at the end is a chemistry professor. Scientists use math, right? Um, Anthony, this little peewee, uh, he was a rascal nephew, but now he's a lawyer, okay? <laughs> now he's in his 30s and he's a lawyer in London. Uh, a lawyer dealing with, uh, actually a financial lawyer. He deals with math every single day. Um, Peter, my brother-in-law is a computer programmer. Sure, he uses math. Um, dealing with big data and networks. Yeah, he totally uses math. Um, okay, so I think I'll I probably need to, uh, oh, my husband is right here, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's an electrical engineer and he uses math every day as an electrical engineer. Yeah. So does everybody, uh, Freddie Bell's asking, does everybody in your family like math as much as you? I'm going to have to go on my family chat later and tell them that I talked about them and how they all use math. Some of them will say, really? We didn't like math that much. But if you look at their jobs, they're all using it. Okay. <laughs> so not every, I mean, look at my brother, Johnny. He's now CEO of a company. I, I don't know. Back in high school, I think he would have said he didn't like school that much. He probably said he didn't like math that much. But is he using it now? Yeah, I think he is. You know, he has to watch the money and the budget and for his company. So, yeah, I think he, he's using it now. Uh, he's probably liking it more now than he did before. So let's see. How's that? Any questions about this? Big old family before I go on. Oh, here's high school. <laughs> Sorry, was there somebody? Yeah, I had a question. Yeah, Prisha. What was um what was the name of your brother's company? Title Nine. Oh, cool. Yeah, if you look it up, there they actually have really good um athletic clothing. So I go to their um, they have like this 
big old like yard sale once a year where I get their $90, uh, you know, leggings for, I don't know why they're like 80, $90, but I get them for five bucks when I go to their sale. So pretty good deal. It's nice having a brother there. <laughs> um, oh, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right. Is it Gauri? Is that right? Asked yeah. what was, yeah, good question. What was my dream job growing up? You know, there was one point when I told my dad that I want to be a concert pianist. And, uh, and then there was another time, gosh, I think I told my dad I want to be a concert pianist or a musician. He's like, oh, no, don't do that. There's no money in that. Isn't that like a traditional Chinese father's response? I don't know. Not all of you have Chinese fathers, but that's kind of a classic Chinese father response. <laughs> um, and then... Um, yeah, so I went through all sorts of stuff. Then at one point I said, I wanna be a social worker like my dad. And he said, oh, there's no money in that either. Um, and then, you know, I'm a teacher. He would probably, he's, he's not alive now, but he would probably say, oh, there's no money in that. But um, now I tell my own kids, learning from my father and what he used to tell me, I tell my own kids, do what you're passionate about. Yeah, do what you're passionate about. Don't do what it, Oh, I don't know where the money is or whatever. My son uh, graduated from Stanford. He got pretty, I mean, he got like jobs that paid a lot of money in computer software, but he's passionate about teaching and about working with people that are not as privileged as he is. So he's actually working at a nonprofit at Street Code Academy in East Palo Alto, giving free computer science classes to people in East Palo Alto. And he loves it. And I'm very happy for him. So now, yeah, the advice I'm giving my kids is maybe a little different than the advice that my dad gave me. Um, how long, Kelly asked, how long did I do computer software for? Um, I was at Tannen Computers for 10 years and then um, at Hilla Packard for almost a year. So yeah, so about 10, 11 years. And then before I taught calculus at Valley, I taught computer science at Milpitas Christian. Um, so this is math before COVID. <laughs> math in my classroom before COVID. We had writable, hopefully, I'm hoping one day, should be soon, okay, we'll come back to this. I love group work. Um, and Madeline asked how long I've been teaching. This is my 16th year at Valley Christian. And this is math now, okay, <laughs> or teaching now. Is this what your classes look like now? Do you guys see one of your teachers there? Yeah, I see yeah. Cheryl's on the top. Yeah, sorry, I didn't have a picture of Cheryl's class, but um, I'm sure Cheryl would also have her camera on. Yeah, see, when a teacher is looking out and teaching, we love seeing the faces on, okay? Because then I can see, right? Doesn't Cheryl's look like she's focusing, right? She's paying attention, huh? <laughs> she looks tired. Oh, no. <laughs> Does she? Oh, I think I'm gonna have to car out tomorrow if she's looking tired, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I look out and like if everybody has their cameras off, it's hard. It's really hard. Okay, so that's just a plug for if you go to your virtual class, yeah. Turn on your cameras. Your teachers have a, I don't know, we have a more fun time when I'm looking out and I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing Jai Yi. Is that right? Is that your name? Is that how you say it? Yeah, you know, she looks like she's paying attention and maybe even giving me a smile now and then, Anishka. And, you know, I love seeing faces out there. So yeah, brighten your teachers um, and turn, if you can, I know not everybody can't. Um, what do you think is the most rewarding part of teaching? Now you guys are asking good questions, Sophia. Um, I love when like the light bulb goes off. Do you know what I mean by that? Like I'm teaching something like it's really hard. Okay, calculus, people think calculus is really hard. But if I teach it and I see like, you know, I look out and like, look at how like Sheris and Cheryl, like they're smiling, right? Okay, either they're really getting it or at least they're having fun. Then I'm like, yes, okay, that's rewarding. Okay, if I see like, wow. Or if I see a student like beginning of the year, I've had some students beginning of the year tell me they don't like math. And then it gets to the middle of the year and they start telling me, you know, I think I'm starting to like math. In fact, I like calculus. 
whoa, that's rewarding. Yeah, that's definitely rewarding. When I see somebody like turn around and they either like just get it or they like start to like something they didn't like before, that's awesome. Um, was there a year that you, uh, Freddie Bell's asking a great question. Was there a year that you especially liked or disliked in your years of teaching? You know, I probably, I might've said this, this virtual teaching, I don't like so much. Um, but there's good in that too. So it's not, I don't dislike it because um, there's challenges with this. You know, I'm looking forward to the day when we can go back into the classroom um, and I see everybody, you know, I don't need to rely on whether the cameras are on or not, okay? Um, but I still like it though. So is there a year that I, oh, I know my first year of teaching, that's what my first year of teaching was the hardest. So if you guys have like teachers and you know it's their first year of teaching, uh, be really, really nice to them, okay? <laughs> you might be thinking, oh, they're not doing that good of a job. I got them in their first year, but be really nice to them because the first year of teaching is the hardest. Um, Callie's asking, what do you like about teaching virtually? There's actually a lot of things I like about teaching virtually. I like... Um, like if I'm home, I like that I can be in sweatpants. You guys have no idea if I'm wearing sweatpants right now, right? Or if I'm wearing fuzzy socks and no shoes at all, right? Um, I love that, okay? I love being comfortable. Um, I like that, yeah, with virtual teaching. Um, yeah, I think that's the main thing. I like being comfortable. So I like being, you know, being able to, and maybe you students like that. If you can pay attention and be comfortable, um, you know, that's good, right? So that part I do like. Um, <laughs> Mia, that's great. Your parents say that math is one of the most important subjects in school. Do you agree? Why? Absolutely. You know, I started going through my whole big family, right? And I can tell you, it doesn't matter what they're working on. If it's real estate, and my family is kind of, they're kind of getting old now, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter if they're doing real estate or if they're a chemistry professor, they're all using math. So that's why, yeah, I do think math is one of the most important subjects because no matter what you're going to do in life later, you may not be a math major. Um, I have some of my students that got all the way to multivariable calculus, but then they decided they actually wanted to go into, they want to be a politician one day. And they studied, you know, they went into like uh, political science or something like that. But I think, don't you think the best politicians are those that understand math? Okay. <laughs> so really, whatever job they end up doing, okay, I think they all, yeah, I think math is kind of fundamental. It's really absolutely fundamental. Alyssa, what kind of students do you, uh, what kind of students that you like? What kind of students do you, oh, or don't, I don't know if you meant like or don't like. Um, first of all, there's, I've never taught a student I don't like. I don't know if that's, um, okay. So I like every student, but the ones that are easier to teach during this year, because this year, because of COVID, because of the Zoom thing, okay. The ones that are easier to teach, I have to say, during virtual are those that are, you know, not afraid to speak up like you guys. You guys are great. Um, even if you're typing in questions in chat, okay. Those that are, you know, turning on the cameras or at least talking to me sometime or letting me know when they can't turn on their cameras, you know, that kind of thing, right? Those are easier. Um, oh, oh man, Jai's asking, man, do I have to give this away? What subject did I struggle at when I was young? You guys want to know the hardest subject for me when I was young? Yes. It was, it was PE. I was so bad at PE. We would get to certain things like, oh, gymnastics. I was so bad. You know, we would have to do the balance beam. I'm like fearful of heights, even though it was only like a foot off the ground. I don't know why, why I was so fearful. I would get in line or in the gymnastics line. And then I get to the front and I kind of sneak to the back because I just didn't want to do it. So I'm just really, really bad at PE. So that was my worst that was probably my worst uh, subject in growing up in high school. Have I ever been tutored? Freddie Bell asked. Yes, I married my tutor. <laughs> the person I went to for tutoring in college, I didn't pay him as a tutor. He was just somebody that, uh, Myron, my current husband, um, when I had trouble with computer science, because I didn't have any programming before I took computer classes, in college. So I went to him because he was the, the helper in the computer lab. 
And then when I had trouble with physics, I had a lot of trouble with physics because I didn't take any physics in high school. My high school didn't have physics. So when I took college physics, it was so hard. And I went to him and I realized he was so patient with me. So I ended up marrying the guy. Huh? So that's not bad, huh? <laughs> to marry your tutor, right? <laughs> let me see. Am I missing? If I missed any questions in chat, let me know. Okay. Oh, math can be fun. Okay. You seeing this slide? And I'm waiting for the day when I can bring food into the classroom again. If you look at my Zoom background, it's pies. If you guys want a pie today, tell your parents that Safeway has pies on sale for $3.14. You know why? Why is it $3.14 today for pie? Pie is 3 and 14. Did, oh, several of you. Just say it out loud. Look like a few of you know that. What's today? It's, it's, it's pie, pie day. day. Pie day. It's pie day. Yes, it's pie day. Okay, because it's March 14th. Okay, 3.1. I, I had a student bring this cake to me once, this, this pie uh, cake. Right. So yeah, so Safeway always does that on Pie Day. They sell their pies for $3.14. This is some of the food that students have brought into my classroom. You see how calculus can be fun, right? Okay, so I want you guys to pass your years of math, get through algebra, geometry, algebra two, uh, what else? Trigonometry, pre-calculus, okay? So you can get to the funnest year of math. I think that's calculus, no? Would Cheryl and Cheryl agree? <laughs> you missed my question. I asked, what did you like and what did you not like? You said what you didn't like, but you didn't say what you liked. Oh, no. what I liked and what did I not like about what? My question was, um, was there a year that you especially liked or disliked in your years of teaching? You said what year you especially disliked, but not the year. Oh, you what year? Oh, because all my other years I loved. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> No, I do. I really do like my years of teaching. And some, some people have asked me, you're teaching the same thing year after year. Don't you get bored? I actually don't because every year the students are different. And if the students are different, then it feels different. So actually every year I've liked. That's why I'm still there. This is my 16th year. <laughs> I didn't, you notice I didn't go back to engineering, right? Because I, I actually really like teaching. And I love working with, you know, especially like when they're like you guys, you girls, sorry, you know, like you girls, you, you ask great questions, you seem interested, then yeah, I do like it. Here's some other fun with math. These are some of my students. Anybody know why their arms are like that? Might have to ask my students that, huh? Cheryl and Cheryl. Math science. It is. It's a math sign. Alyssa, did you know? What is that math sign? Is that what you wanted to say? It's a curve. Is it? It's a... Yeah? Different... Um, I think Sheris, Sheris and Cheryl should know because they're in my calculus class, huh? What is that symbol? Put, if you put two of them together, it will be the estimate sign. Oh, oh yeah, if you turn them this way, huh? And it becomes approximate. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. It's actually the integral symbol when you get to calculus. Oh, I sorry, Shira was, was just about to answer, huh? Yeah, so you don't need to know that until you get to calculus, but that's what they're doing. Um, these gals, by the way, you know, see this? these two gals dressed in green and blue dress, they came to do their calculus presentation and they sang, they were dressed up as Disney princes. They sang calculus dressed up as Disney princess. I think they changed the words of the Frozen song or something like that to sing about calculus. So that's what that was. Um, and lots of food, right? This is all food. And they're here, they're teaching physics. Uh, they're balancing something, balancing a fork and a toothpick on here because they're teaching center of mass, which is physics, but they're using calculus to teach the physics. So yeah, so math, uh, math can be fun bunch of jobs that you can do. Okay, so it's already past five. So bunch of jobs that you can do with math, with calculus, lots and lots of jobs. Okay, maybe some of your parents do that. Even astronomers, okay, people working in NASA, they use calculus. Okay. Okay, I think I've gone over time. So we went back to bring it back to your teachers. Yeah, thank you so much, Mrs. Shack. Um, I guess like virtual round of applause to you. 
Yay. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank, thank you guys all so much for coming. And we'll see you guys in the coming weeks. We'll be sending out emails with more info about our next classes. Okay. You guys are a great audience. I bet you guys are great students in school. Okay, well, bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank that was you. awkward. Bye. 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 Thank you for coming. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for being a good audience. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.